Yo, 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 what up, YouTube? It's your boy, Sneakonomics, back with another banger. 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 I always really admire the confidence that creators have to be able to open up their video by telling their audience that what they're about to see is going to be a banger. Don't forget to smash that like button and make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. No, I'll, I'll watch the video and if I like your stuff and feel you're pretty cool, then yeah, I might subscribe, but don't tell me what to do. Hello everybody, it is me, Jordan Young, AKA Sneakonomics. And I am back, as you may have gathered already, with another video satirizing, lightly mocking parts of the sneaker community. <laughs> <laughs> In these videos, I like to highlight behaviors and single out bits of content that you may have seen on TikTok, IG, or here on YouTube, and kind of just talk about it. If you're new to the channel and you like sneakers and the occasional good video, uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And if not, no worries, piss off. Nah, 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 I'm only joking, I'm only joking. Don't go, don't go, stay, stay, stay. And subscribe, please. The first cringy behavior I wanna talk about today is the how to tie your shoes tutorial. We've already gone over the how to lace your sneakers tutorial, which is cringe enough as it is, but how to tie your shoes, really? Are your untied laces stressing you out and giving you anxiety? Do you want to know how to fasten your laces so that they'll never come untied and you'll never have to worry about tripping over? First and foremost, take the laces. Make sure that they're untied. Next, cross the laces over so that they make an X. Now, pass one of the laces under the other so that you can secure the X. Now, make two loops or bunny ears. Now, cross the bunny ears over and send one underneath the other and now pull them tight. Congratulations, you've done it. You're four years old. I don't know if this critical piece of information just like bypassed the chapter of a new generation. I don't know why it is that kids on TikTok and YouTube need help at an advanced age doing something that we all learned to do when we were maybe two or three. Like I can totally understand this kind of tutorial being relevant on like YouTube for kids or TikTok for kids. But if you're old enough to be able to like operate a smartphone and even own a smartphone, I sort of feel like you should already know how to tie your laces, but I could be completely wrong. The next cringe behavior is wearing the StockX tag on your sneakers. This is a subject among sneakerheads that's been passed out pretty thoroughly at this point. You'll have no doubt seen content of people mocking people for wearing the StockX tag. So let me just quickly rewind and explain to you why people do it. You see, many years ago, StockX was sort of considered the chief arbiters of authentic. If you got your sneakers from StockX, there was almost a 100% chance that the sneakers were authentic. And wearing the StockX tag was a bit like openly advertising the fact that your sneakers were real. Now fakes and replicas have moved and adapted over the years to change with the sneaker climate. And so in recent years, fakes have also come with their own StockX tags, sort of diminishing the legitimacy of the StockX tag in the first place. Fast forward now to 2022 and StockX's reputation for being the arbiters of authentic is completely trashed and in the mud. They've been sued by Nike for passing fakes as real. Numerous content creators have sent fakes to StockX where they've been passed as real. So in an ironic twist of fate, wearing the StockX tag on your sneakers these days is almost a surefire way to advertise your sneakers a fake rather than authentic. Whether it's the StockX tag or the hang tag, uh, old school sneakerheads might remember a time and a place where wearing the hang tag on your Jordans was quite commonplace and trendy and hip and lit and hype and heat or whatever. 
but I've never really been able to vibe with it personally. Every time I've ever tried to wear the hang tag with my Jordans, it's always just given me mad anxiety. When I'm walking around, it's, it's flinging about, it's rebounding off my sneakers. I'm walking around thinking that it could like fly off at any one moment. It's also not comfortable, it's not practical, and it's very distracting when you're walking. So whether you're wearing the StockX tag or the hang tag, both things are lame and cringe in my opinion. The next cringy content comes from the young dudes out there that have found a home banging on about fakes. Now these uh, youngsters are kind of like a new generation of like flea market salesmen. You know the guy at the flea markets that's trying to sell you some like fake Gucci bag or some fake Rolex watch. These guys are kind of like the new breed internet versions of these cats. My friend, my friend, my friend. Welcome, welcome my friend. My friend, you're looking for shoes? You, you're looking for shoes, my friend. Come, come see my shoes. 100% perfect quality, triple A quality. The quality is perfect, my friend. You will not find any better. My friend, I will do two for one, three for one, four for one. Five for one. In fact, you buy by the weight. You buy by kilogram. You make big haul, big haul. Same as original. You do not need to spend 2,000. You can only spend with me. Spend with me now, three for one. But what cracks me up about these used car salesmen, especially, is th these kind of like interesting psychological techniques that they use to try to like goad you into buy these fakes or, or order these kilos of crap. And a lot of the times they'll do it by telling you the things that they're not going to do. And that's why I got these reps, because I am not going to spend $2,000 on a pair of sneakers I could buy for a hundred bucks. I'm not gonna do it. They'll then go on to like say the same things, but with a little bit of added personal touch with regard to how they hate resellers. That's right, I'm not gonna pay some scumbag reseller asshole for a pair of sneakers that I can just order online. I'm not gonna do it. And then it like starts becoming really real. Like there's almost like a hidden narrative that generally like comes out of the story at this point. I'm not going to spend $2,000 on a pair of sneakers I can get for a hundred bucks. I'm not about to pay some scumbag reseller assholes rent when I can get the same shoe online easy. I'm not trying to support this culture vulture who wears Nike Dunks, socks, short Eric Emanuel shorts with an oversized vintage NASCAR t-shirt and a fitted baseball cap that used to date my sister and play hockey and be the captain of the football team and used to make fun of me for wearing reps at high school. I'm not going to do that. I just find it quite funny. <laughs> Don't get too triggered and jump in my comments uh, complaining about it. I'm not hating on reps. I'm just having a laugh at some of you fellas out there. That's it for today's episode. A little cheeky look at some of the cringier parts of sneaker culture. No offense to anybody out there. It's all just in the name of light and laughter and good humor. Uh, I hope you were able to have a bit of a laugh nonetheless. So if you haven't already subscribed, feel free to do so. And to all of my loyal subscribers out there, thank you all so much for all of the awesome engagement on all of my videos, long and short. And I look forward to seeing you all on the next video. Have a good one and peace.